Hey guys, welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be USMLE Step 1 Microbiology Buzzwords Part 3. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the first two videos by now. I will be making more. Same two disclaimers as always. This information is high yield for both USMLE Step 1 as well as Comlex Level 1. The information may vary depending on what study resources you're using. If you are seeing some different information in the resources you are using, I would recommend just going ahead and using that just to be consistent with your studying. And just as a quick FYI for this one, there's going to be a lot of associations and buzzwords about vectors and disease associations and transmission, those kinds of things. So just be aware of that. Went with a pink sunset kind of color for this one, but the first one here, snails. If you see snails on the exam, the microbe I want you to be thinking of is schistosoma. More specifically than that, if you need to know it, schistosoma mansoni and schistosoma hematobium. But if you see snails on the exam, just know that that is associated with schistosoma. Hydatid cysts, if you see hydatid cysts on the exam, you definitely want to be thinking about echinococcus granulosis. Undercooked pork, if you see this on the exam, the association that I want you to make is with the tapeworm teneosolium. So undercooked pork is going to be the tapeworm teneosolium. Elephantiasis, we definitely want to know the causative agent for this because they may ask that straight up. And in this case, it is going to be Wuchereria bancrofti. Worm in the conjunctiva. If you see this on the exam, if you see an image of this on the exam, there's only one thing it's really going to be, and that's loa loa. The condition, the disease itself is called loiasis. Gross picture upcoming, but just in case you need the visual cue, this is loiasis. This is that worm in the eyeball in the conjunctiva right there. So if you see anything like this on the exam, the immediate association should be loa loa. The mango fly, you should know this as well because this is going to be the vector for loa loa. So very important to know that. A peptic ulcer mimic, if you have a patient on the exam and they're asking you what microbe can be mimicking this problem or what could be mimicking a peptic ulcer, you want to know that's going to be strongyloides Corallis. So a peptic ulcer mimic is Strongyloides stercoralis. Nifertamox. If you see this drug on the exam, Nifertamox, there's really only one microbe it should be associated with, and that's Trypanosoma cruzi. This is, of course, the organism that causes Chagas disease. So Nifertamox is used to treat Chagas disease, and the microbe causing Chagas disease is Trypanosoma cruzi. Next one here, Cardiomegaly. You also want to associate this with Trypanosoma cruzi and with Chagas disease. Remember, Chagas disease is a condition that kind of makes everything bigger. So you're going to have cardiomegaly, you're going to have esophagomegaly, all of those things. Keep in mind here, this is cardiomegaly, not cardiomyopathy. A Maltese cross, if you see this on the exam, this is going to be because of Babesia. Remember, this is the tetrad of trophozoites that is formed on a blood smear. Here's a visual reminder if you need it. This is the Maltese cross, and this is going to be seen with Babesia and Babesiosis. Next one, the Tsetse fly. Hopefully you know this one. This one is very commonly tested. This is going to be Trypanosoma brucei. So Tsetse fly, the African sleeping sickness, is Trypanosoma brucei. Cribiform plate. The cribiform plate in the skull, this is really important because this is where Nigleria fowleri enters the brain to cause meningoencephalitis. So if you see any type of microbe invading the cribiform plate, they show you something like that on a C they show that there is damage to the cribiform plate. You want to be thinking about Nigleria fowleri. Intracranial calcifications. Hopefully, you will be able to identify this one on CAT scan, but we need to know the causative organism as well. It's going to be Toxoplasma gondii. This is the cause of toxoplasmosis. And here's that all too common CAT scan showing the intracranial calcifications. We see a couple of them here. Those rim like calcifications that we see on CT scan. Really important to know that. Next one water aerosols. If we see this on the exam, we want to be thinking about Legionella. A lot of people make the association of Legionella with air conditioning units, but water aerosols is also something that we need to make an association with. A normal vaginal pH, this one is important because this is going to be a sign of candida and candidiasis. Normal vaginal pH, just FYI, is about 4.0 to 4.5, and if you have a candidal infection, there is a normal vaginal pH. Whereas with other conditions such as Gardnerella, causing bacterial vaginosis, and trichomonas, causing trichomoniasis, the pH in the vagina is greater than 4.5. So really important to know all of those different distinctions. If it is a normal vaginal pH and there is an infectious process going on, you want to be thinking about candida. Next one, swarming on plating. If we see this, we want to be thinking about Proteus mirabilis. This is a really important one. Proteus is a gram-negative bacilli. They are motile, so when they are plated on agar plating, you may see them swarming together. They may tell you that it's swarming together, and you want to be thinking about Proteus mirabilis. Next one, Burkholderia sepacea. This one is a little bit lower yield, but I just want to make sure you guys know it so that if you see it on the exam, you can make the quick association with cystic fibrosis. This is one of those microbes that patients with cystic fibrosis are at a really increased risk of. You're not really seeing it anywhere else in your board studying, so I just want to make sure that you make that association. Mayonnaise. If you see this on the exam, I want you to think about Staphylococcus aureus. 
You've probably seen this question. Someone's having a picnic. It's a hot day. There's an egg salad that's been left out all day. Everyone eats the egg salad and everyone gets sick. What is the causative organism? You want to be thinking about Staphylococcus aureus. Phylovirus. If we see phylovirus on the exam, we want to be thinking Ebola virus. Phylovirus or phyloviridae is the family and Ebola virus is one of the viruses within that family. Another lower yield virus to know for the phyloviridae family is Marburg virus, but the real big association to make is with Ebola virus. Next buzzword here, hydrophobia. If you see hydrophobia on the exam, I want you to be thinking about rabies virus. This is a really random association, but you may have a patient that is bitten by, you know, a feral dog or a bat or something like that and they come into the hospital and they try to drink water and they just can't tolerate they're choking. It's a really strange thing, but they're hydrophobic, and that's because of the rabies virus, so really important to know that. Next buzzword, microcephaly. If you see this on the exam, I want you to be thinking about Zika virus. You may remember this from several years ago when there was that outbreak in South Florida. There were a lot of babies being born with microcephaly. That is because of Zika virus. We're going to get into a couple different receptors here. These buzzwords are also important to know, so you want to make the association between the receptor and the microbe or the virus. The first one here, ICAM-1 receptor. This is associated with rhinovirus. This is how rhinovirus is binding and getting into cells. Next one, CD21. This is Epstein-Barr virus. This is super, super important to know. You need to know the association between CD21 and Epstein-Barr virus. After that, the ACE2 receptor. This one, a little bit more recent, but it may still be on the exam. This is the SARS-CoV-2 virus. This is the coronavirus that's causing the global pandemic. It can bind the ACE2 receptor to invade cells. Cholangiocarcinoma. If you see this on the exam, it is a neoplastic process, but the association that you want to make in terms of microbiology is clonorchus senescus. If you see cholangiocarcinoma, it is clonorchus senescus. Brain cysts and seizures. If you see this, this is also tinea solium. So remember, undercooked pork, tinea solium, brain cysts and seizures, tinea solium, this is a parasite that can cause seizures and cysts in the brain. Portal hypertension, if we're seeing this and there's some type of an association with a microbe, we want to be thinking about schistosoma for this one. Getting to the end here, single-stranded DNA virus, really the only one that you need to know for exam purposes is going to be parvovirus. It is the only single-stranded DNA virus. If you watch my previous videos, you should know it is also the smallest DNA virus, so really important to know those key features about parvovirus. DNA virus that does not have an icosahedral shape. This is another exception that we need to know. The only DNA virus for exam purposes that does not have an icosahedral shape is the pox virus. And hopefully, again, you've watched those other videos. If you haven't, definitely check them out. But pox virus is also the largest DNA virus, and we want to know that as well. And then finally here, the DNA virus that does not replicate in the nucleus, this is going to be the pox virus as well. Really important to know these features about parvovirus being the smallest, pox virus being the biggest. Pox virus does not replicate in the nucleus, does not have an icosahedral shape. A lot of exceptions here that you'll want to know so that you can get questions right on test day. That being said, that is the end of this video. As always, thank you so much for watching please subscribe to my channel to get updates as to when I'm posting my latest videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Thank you again for watching and good luck studying.